Hi, and welcome to Spectrum. I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. We look forward to a great time together. It's always fun to share with you. Ruth, two great guests with us uh -huh. today. We're, we're going to kick off by talking to Jennifer Hayden. Jennifer is the Deputy Director and Director of Communications for the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. That is a cool museum. <laughs> we're looking forward to it's talking to her. It's very cool. And we also will have with us Sean Calgill. He's with Wings for Life International. So you're not going to want to miss a minute of these two great interviews. It's a pleasure to have with us today Jennifer Hayden, who is the Deputy Director and Director of Communications for the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. Jennifer, it's a treat to have you back. Thank you. I always enjoy coming to talk to y'all, so thank you. Well, we look forward to learning a little bit about new things happening at your museum, and it's a beautiful museum. We had the privilege of being there just a few weeks ago, and if you've never visited, you need to. It is, it is quite a... Uh, a gym here in Albuquerque. But for folks who are new to hearing about what you do, mm -hmm. tell us just a, a little bit about yourself quickly and then let's jump in to knowing about uh, the museum and maybe some new exhibits that are there. Absolutely. Gosh, so myself, I've been in Albuquerque now about 13 years. I love it that here. It almost makes you a native. Almost. It really, I mean, and I've been with the museum that whole time. Wow. So I've been with the museum quite a while, um, moved up in different positions and now director of communications and deputy director. So I'm, wow. I'm very honored to be in that because I absolutely love our museum. Um, my husband has a company here and our two little boys, one just um, has started you know, middle school and the other one's still in elementary school, but Albuquerque has definitely become our home. And it's interesting when people come to visit, um, like our museum specifically, it's just guests coming to our museum. I oftentimes have people say, why is the nuclear museum, the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque, New Mexico? Yeah. And it's something that we always tell people that this was really the beginning of the atomic age. I mean, starting with the Manhattan Project, so one of the secret cities being Los Alamos. And then when it was the race to create the world's first atomic bomb, it was tested in White Sands, New Mexico in 1945. So truly, the beginning of the atomic age was very much, in many ways, in New Mexico. Well, let's talk about some of the exhibits. And I'm just going to pause for a moment and say, I, I've seen many of the exhibits there. They're beautiful. They're, they're really awesome. They really are. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I've been, to the, I've been to the Smithsonian, and of course, this is a, is a Smithsonian affiliate. Correct. But uh, tell us about some of the new things that you have there. Oh my goodness. So some of our newer exhibits, it just kind of depends on the last time you've been to the museum. But some of the newer ones right now, we have a nuclear by mail. So that one is something that very hmm. much focuses on stamps, stamp collections, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stamps that were very relevant to the atomic age in the beginning, World War II, Cold War. Wow. We have really redone a lot of our exhibitions as far as nuclear medicine. So when we say the atomic age and we tell the story of the atomic age, it's everything from the inception, such as Manhattan, Project, Cold War, to today's peaceful uses. So we very much talk about nuclear medicine and nuclear energy. Currently, we're working on an exhibit that will open here in a couple of months that will be about thorium. So that's thorium. something that thorium. What and that's is thorium? I'm going to have to learn about it. In okay. all honesty, we are going You'll have through to go through the classes. exhibit yourself. Okay. <laughs> I will. I'll have to read everything. But we have our exhibit director and our curator really working very diligently to create these beautiful new exhibits for people. But in all honesty, after all the years I've been at the museum, probably our most popular areas are our outdoor exhibit area, Heritage Park. Mm -hmm. You really cannot go wrong when you walk out and see these behemoth aircraft, such yeah. as the B-29 Super Fortress, a B-52B Strata Fortress. Um, and we even have a replica of the Trinity 
Trinity Tower, which held the world's very first atomic bomb. It's a replica, of course. The first one right. was, it evaporated yeah. in 1945. Um, but there's really something to see for everybody. It really is interesting. We were, when we were there, there were some kids that were there. And I'll tell you what, they were really engaged. They really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I was surprised we were there close to closing time. Mm -hmm. People didn't want to leave, you know, <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was pretty interesting to watch. Well, let's talk about some of the educational programs because, uh, again, uh, you know, and, and I didn't really know that this interview would be coming up, but I, when I was there, uh -huh. I thought, looks like they've got some kids in there that are doing, well, I was there in the summer, they were doing some after school or summer school things. Yes. What, what kind of stuff do you do for educational projects? Oh my goodness. Education is such a huge part of who we are as a museum because museums are informal education centers. We're the places where people can come in in an inclusive, welcoming space and enjoy and learn on their own terms. Mm -hmm. So they can come in, look at things, read certain things, just look around and really have it mirror. So what does this mean to me? Sure. And so with education, which is very important to us, we do all camps that follow the APS break schedule. So summer camps, winter break camps, spring break camps, those different things. But with fall approaching, of course we have camps, but we have other initiatives. We have an out of school time program called Project Adam for high school students. It is free, but it is a time after school on, I believe it's one day a week, they're able to come to the museum and learn, learn specifically about nuclear science hmm. from one of our volunteers who is a retired scientist. Interesting. We also have um, junior docents for high school students, again free, and this is for any of our high schoolers in Albuquerque who are wanting to get volunteer time under I their gotcha. belt. Gotcha. They can come to the museum, become a junior docent, oftentimes that's on a Saturday morning, and then we have lots of homeschool initiatives. Well, I was going to ask about that because yes. you know, as, as we're moving into kind of a, a new season post-COVID, not mm -hmm. everybody is sending their kids back to school. Right. Some have decided, hey, homeschool is for me. So tell me about, what do you do with homeschoolers? With homeschoolers, we actually start and follow the semesters. So right now, starting in September, you can enroll your kiddos anywhere from kindergarten through 12th grade in our homeschool programs, which happen weekly. They take hmm. place on different days at different times, depending on the age range. But by going to our website at nuclearmuseum.org, all of the information is there where you can just click on it and look to see, okay, what's available for my child? And, and those I would assume it's by age groups, it right? It is, okay. yes. I mean, they are sectioned off, so it's not just first grade is one class, second grade is another. Mm -hmm. um, they are with some of their, you know, their peers, kids who are around the same age. Certainly. And so we have fall break coming up, and then, of course, it'll follow right back up with spring, uh, spring time as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now... Folks who like to participate maybe more regularly or who've never gone, how, how do you visit? I mean, there, there is an admission price, certainly. Yes. Uh, but can you, you know, I know some of the groups around, you can become like an annual pass holder. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do things like that? How does it work out? So we do. We have a membership program. So different, varying levels of membership, whether you wanted a family membership, like for myself, my husband, and my children. We can all go have free admission throughout the entire year. You can go as many times as you want. Discounts on camps, discounts in the store. Um, there are memberships for senior citizens. There are memberships just for an individual or student. Um, even for children. So it just kind of depends what you're looking for. But one of the really, one of the coolest things about becoming a member of our museum is you become part of the Aztec Passport Program, hmm. the Association of Science and Technology Centers, which is national. Okay. So by being a member at our museum and having your membership card, you can go to other cities around the nation who are also Aztec members and get into their museums for free. You know what, uh, and there must be people who, who do that very regularly. Again, I'm I referencing <laughs> back to my day that I went by the museum, and there was a guy outside videoing himself talking about this museum as he was passing through town. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. so I was thinking, oh, wow, obviously this guy is a museum goer, right? I mean, this is a person who, and a lot of people love to be a mm -hmm. part. Now, a camp 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how long do camps run? Do they run a week? Do they run two weeks? It depends. Um, when it's summer camp, they're one week long, Monday through Friday. Okay. When it is during the rest of the school year, they're one day camps. So if it's during winter break and generally kiddos have two weeks off, their parents can enroll them in one day, just Monday, mm -hmm. just Tuesday. So it just kind of depends. Is fall busy? Is, is this a busy time of year? Our busiest time at the museum is definitely summer tourism and then balloon fiesta. I was going to say, I, I bet balloon fiesta. Ooh, just, it does. Uh, and packed. it's something that we're a little bit different than other museums because I would say almost 75 to 80% of our visitation is out of state. We have people coming to New Mexico and they want to specifically see our museum. So that is something we're always trying to get more local visitation, but it's just unique that people can come by the museum. Our, our local folks need to avail themselves yes. of this. So <laughs> if you're watching the Albuquerque Santa Fe, hey, definitely take a trip to the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. Give us the location. We are at 601 Eubank Boulevard Southeast, just cat a corner to the um, Costco. So south of I-4. 40 on Eubank. All right. Beautiful museum, large museum, large outdoor park, mm -hmm. and uh, some place that you really should go. I mean, I'm, I'm talking from personal experience, having uh, gone around and checked stuff out, I want to go back. So, Jennifer, thank you for sharing with us, thank and uh, we really appreciate all the updates today. My pleasure. Thank you. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. I just want to say thank you to each of you who partnered with Alpha Omega Broadcasting with your support. You are making a difference in our world daily by helping us and for us, we're, give, we're getting the word of Jesus Christ out and the good news of Jesus Christ and that is one of the things I think this world is lacking is good news and something we need to continue doing is spreading Jesus Christ and letting the world know who he is and I want to thank each of you so much. We've had new partners come on board. Isn't that great? I just spoke with one this morning, and it's just a blessing to know that God is our support. God is the one that tugs at your heart and says, you need to do this, and then you follow in obedience and open the door to blessing. And so I just want to say thank you for doing that. Many of you do it by calling 505-884-8355, extension 101, to speak to someone, or sometimes you go directly to me, and that's great. I love talking to you and setting that up for you. You can reach us online, remember, at www.kazq32.org to give safely online. You can also set up a day of the month. It'll do it for you automatically. Or if you have it ready and would like to send it in, you can do that to Alpha Omega Broadcasting, 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. You know, Ruth, in the next few days, we're going to begin working on some new things on the Spectrum set as well. This is something we've been uh, trying to, to move forward on for a while, but we're finally to a point that we can. We told you that 2022 would be the year that we really worked on local production and uh, dip, doing things to make things better over the course of uh, a lot of different areas, whether it's equipment or we're going to be working on sets and different things as well. So we look forward to a new look coming soon. And uh, we're here to, to minister to you. You know, we celebrate 35 years of ministry uh, at Alpha Omega Broadcasting Amazing. in October, just a few weeks away. Thank you for all you do. Remember, your donations are tax deductible. We appreciate your support. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. privilege to have with us today Sean Calgill who is representing today Wings for Life International. Now we've had the privilege many times of sharing with folks from Wings for Life but today Sean we're going to kind of go in a new direction and look forward to, to hearing your story and how it how it fits in. I think a good place to start is tell us about you and tell us maybe just a little bit about how you got connected with the folks with Wings for Life. Okay. So I was hired on about eight months ago from Wings for Life. How I got hired was I, I have a YouTube channel called Federal Prison Talk. And uh, it's That's all- That's a unique name. It is. Uh, and so I went to federal prison. Uh, I've been out about three years and I did three years in federal prison. Um, and that was kind of the turning point in my life that finally woke me up 
But I started this channel because in the federal system, people go to pretrial. It was four years for me on pretrial. So you're at home, you can go to work and all that, but one day you're going to go to prison. And every couple months you go to court and you check in and you, you take drug tests and you, you, know, you check in with a pretrial officer. But sooner or later they're going to sentence you. And I, it's, it's a living hell. Your life's on hold. You know, um, wow. So I started the channel to help people that went through the same thing I did. Because there was two guys doing it before I went to prison who helped me uh, and answered a hundred questions I have that the lawyers can't help you with. Um, well, well, tell us a little so, bit about you know you, you have a kind of an inside track of what yeah. somebody who is going to be incarcerated at the federal level right. has has encountered. Um, Give, give us you know, just a, a, a little, little glimpse behind the scenes. What are some of the things that you would share with, with people on your channel? And uh, then we're going to talk about how that's connected to Wings for Yeah, because that tied it, tied it all in. So, um, I get, so I put my phone number on my YouTube videos, and I have about 300 of them. And uh, you would think, why would you put your phone number out there for people? I'm going to tell you, God doesn't let crazy people call. I've never had a crazy, I've been doing it two years, never had crazy people call me. I get two or three or four calls a day, nothing more than I can't handle, but usually from different people. I probably talked to 500 people in the last two years. Wow. And they call me up, I've lot. been watching your videos, there's so much help, thank you, I can't find these answers, my lawyer doesn't know uh, how to get into an RDAP program to give me a year off, I don't know how to write a character reference letter, my lawyer won't have time for me, what's it like to use the bathroom in prison, are they going to beat me up when I go there? Uh, I'm, I'm getting the people that are nonviolent that are out on the pretrial. Like I was telling earlier, the terrorists, the rapists, the murderers, they're locked up the whole time until they're sentenced. Um, I can't help those guys because, you know, they're, they're locked up. But the ones, uh, the nonviolent, and that includes a lot of drug dealers that are nonviolent, they call me and they want help. Um, and they're almost crying when they call me because I think they've watched my videos and they realize uh, you got to take accountability for what you did, your crimes, your actions, everything mm -hmm. you did. I didn't even, you don't only hurt yourself, you hurt your family, your kids, your loved ones, your friends, your employers, people you went to high school with find out. I mean, everybody's got to, you, you take those whole people down with you in a way, especially your close ones, your family, and, and unless you take accountability for your actions and you're willing to change and you want to change, then I can't help you. Well, Sean, let's talk about that. Did prison change you? And, you know, we, we hear various stories. Some people say... I mean, you know, the ex extreme position, there shouldn't be prisons anymore. I'm not sure that that's, that's accurate. No, but, we, you know, we need but, prisons. But you, did, did it change you for the better or for the worse? Because I think you can hear both sides of that coin. It changed me for the better. Now, there are some people that go to prison, they come out worse. You know, they learn how to rob the bank better, what they did wrong in their crimes, and they hang out with those kind of people in prison. And, and, and yes, it can be like a... Uh, a, a learning institution for criminals, mm. there are those ones that go to prison, they get nothing out of it. Well, how about it for you? What was it like for, for you? For me, it was a big wake-up call. I had been to jail a couple times. Uh, I also had a drug and alcohol problem, and uh, I tried a couple drug rehabilitations, um, but I couldn't pull together more than a year clean and sober until I went to prison. And where I was at was a minimum federal prison camp in Florence, Colorado, with no fences only out of bound signs. So if I wanted drugs, they were there. Hmm. But this was a wake up call for me. I was 52 years old, I had to look at my life. I was there for wire fraud, for filing tax, false returns, tax, false tax returns for- Okay, uh, so what they would consider is a white collar crime? Right, white collar crime. Um, but I did it for like 100 people. I had them cheat on their tax forms so I could take a cut of their, their refunds. Uh, so, uh, so let's talk about now. I'm guilty, and I'm guilty, and I did it, and. It was, it was wrong. And so now, today, you're working with Wings for Life. Working with Wings for Life. International. And, and those folks are working with people who are getting out of prison. So you have a job with them. You're employed by them to right. help people. How do you connect your own personal life experience to what could be helpful oh, to somebody so who is yeah. going through? Maybe they're not in a federal prison. Maybe they're in a state prison state or something prison. else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we kind of, it's half and half. Uh, in Albuquerque, I'd say our clients are half federal and half state. Okay. But, you know, mothers come in with their three kids and the husband's in prison. And they have nobody else to turn to. Nobody understands. We understand. The first thing we do is, like, let you know we understand when we come in the door. 
we have people coming out of prison. They're at like the federal halfway house. They have to do community service and they'll, the word gets out to go to Wings for Life. But when they come through that door, I'm the first guy to greet them and tell them, hey, I'm just like you, don't worry. Uh, we're going to get you through this and we're going to help you find a job. We're going to help you reunite with your family and find a, you know, a place to live when you get out of the halfway house. And the is there is, a hopelessness amongst a lot of people as they come out of, sure. out of uh, incarceration? You're labeled a felon. Your family's disowned you. Uh, the average person who does five years more longer or more in prison is probably not going to have a wife to come home to or a girlfriend, vice versa with, when a woman goes to prison. Uh, the guys that I've seen in prison, uh, after five years, you're, you're, they, they've left you. They, they don't want to wait for you anymore because you've hurt them while you're locked up. You hurt your family. You hurt your kids. You hurt your, your employers. You hurt your friends. And you come out and you still have this label on you and... Uh, People don't want to really hire felons. Yeah, they'll hire, they'll let us work, shine their shoes, make their Subway sandwich, work at Taco Bell, do their roof, you know, unplug their toilet, but they don't want to give us any real professional jobs, you know, and it's tough out there. It's tough to make it. So you work on connecting those people back into the labor market, working with them on, I would assume, and I know that you only do one facet of it, but there, there's other important things to support the family and those who are who are dealing with this loss and this trauma. Yeah. You know, uh, you weren't always from Albuquerque, were no, you, Sean? No, no, I was born and raised in San Francisco, and I do come from a broken home, um, and so alcoholic parents, and uh, they both died of alcoholism. My father died while I was in prison, but I was able to make our amends with him because uh, I, I didn't have it easy, and I used that for a long time as an excuse, but... Eventually, you got to grow up. We were talking about this earlier. You got to take accountability. Um, what were you telling me? That God yeah, you know, you, there's not anybody who gets through life without pain. Yeah. You know, I, I, you, you had your situations in your life where you struggled with uh, alcoholic parents yeah. or an alcoholic parent. You know, I can say in my life, I had a mom who passed away of, of a breast cancer when I was still a teenager. Uh, one of our staff that's right here with us uh, helping us produce the program today. You know, lost a father when before they were sure. one year old. There's not any of us who've not encountered pain. But Sean, we do have to take, get to a point where we take responsibility for us and, and understand that each of us are responsible for our own actions. We have to, to understand that we are responsible for ourselves. Well, how'd you get to Albuquerque? I mean, that's so, a long way from San so, Francisco uh, to Albuquerque. So Anne Edenfield Sweet is our co-founder over at Wings for Life. She started watching my YouTube channel. Wow. And saw that I'm helping these guys and just saw something in me, calls me up. Would you like to come on my Monday night Zoom and YouTube uh, show that we do? I said, sure. So we did it remotely. Then I had her come on my channel. And we started just keeping in touch. And a couple months later, she all calls up and offers me a job. Wow. Yeah, we have an open. We have a pro program called Wings Works, where we uh, are going to be training people coming out of prison to teach them how to run their own business. We have some workshops. We have two businesses that have donated their businesses to us. Wow. So that uh, one lady is retiring, and she does uh, ceramic pottery and clay, clay works and stuff. But she has all the customers lined up. It's a wholesale business. She's giving us the business. Amazing. So we're training people, and we're going to be hiring more and more people. Uh, I, we just got to hire uh, a friend of mine who I spent time with in Florence, Colorado. I'm so glad that now I get to work with a guy, one of these guys that was my support group in prison, one of the good guys. Wow. And, uh, you know, today we're, we're both clean and sober. We're mm -hmm. helping others. We're giving back. And, and that is a good feeling. There. Man, that is a great, great reality. Well, there's been information on the screen how you can get in touch with Wings for Life International, and we would encourage you, if you are going through a situation where you're in contact or you have a family member or a friend who is going into prison or maybe they have people are on the outside and they need to be supported, Wings for Life International is a great group. Sean, thanks for sharing your story today. Thank you. up in the book of James, James chapter one. I really love, Ruth and I, we were talking about this, we love reading James. Me too. It's a great book. 
great things for every day. It kind of, it, it holds your attention. You're like, what, what was that? You do. And you read it over and over again, and God has a fresh word for you. Well, let's start in verse it. five and read okay. just down maybe through around the eighth verse and uh, pluck some hopefully wis uh, nuggets of wisdom out of there. Okay. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should never expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. You know what I see in those verses? One of the mm -hmm. first things I see is God's a giver. It, yes. it says very specifically, if you lack wisdom, ask our generous, generous God. Yeah. God is generous. You know, he gives you more than you deserve. Oh, yes. He's better to all of us. Certainly been better in my life than I deserve him mm -hmm. to be. It follows with this statement, and he will give it to you. Now, the, the next statements that are made, the mm -hmm. next verses dealing with not having divided loyalty, not having a divided ass, not wavering, will God, won't God, I don't know, does God love me, does God care, am I worthy all of those things that people struggle with, being blown and tossed. It says those things keep you from having it. You won't, you won't receive from God. You shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord because their loyalty is divided. You're not really trusting God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important to ask God in faith believing that he will do exactly what he said he would do and especially giving you wisdom. I like that second part of verse 5. It says, he will not rebuke you for asking. How many times are you like, well, I asked the Lord about that a month ago, and I still haven't, I hate to keep asking him. It says here, he will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask, you have to, your faith has to be in him. Amen. Do not doubt. So many times the thing that keeps us from our answered prayer is us doubting. We don't believe. God says, I will do it. Trust me. I will do the things for you. Do not doubt. Many times we're not healed because we're doubting. Come on. If we will just keep our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, he will come through at just the right time. God bless you and thank you for being with us on Spectrum today.